I, 33 female, married my husband Alex, 35, eight years ago. About five years ago, my mum died sometime after my second child was born. I went into depression due to her death and postpartum. We stayed at my mum's house for about six months with my sister Sally, 28. Alex and Sally helped me a lot during this time and got me out of that dark phase. Things eventually got better and we came back home. About two years ago, we had our anniversary and we decided to celebrate at home. Sally came too. However, towards the end of the party, I saw Alex and Sally arguing, and then she abruptly left. When I asked him, he broke down and told me he had an affair with Sally. Basically, when I was in depression, he was so lonely and didn't know how to make things better. I became like a shell of a person, and he felt helpless seeing me like that. Then Sally came and comforted him. They would share their feelings with each other and become each other's emotional support. This led to an emotional affair that turned physical after Sally kissed him. However, after Sally asked him to divorce me, he realized his mistake, freaked out, and just ghosted her. After the party, Sally was angry for not leaving me and accused him of using her and throwing her away. He had a breakdown and kept on apologizing. I asked him to leave and that we would get a divorce. He left eventually and we were separated for quite some time. I confronted Sally and she started crying and wanted to explain, but I just cut the call and went with no contact. However, during this time, my kids would cry for their dad and my oldest would constantly ask for him. Also, since I'm working, it's almost impossible for me to take care of them alone at the same time. Also, divorce seemed a bad idea financially. Most importantly, Alex is a great dad and I couldn't see my kids in pain, so I decided not to get divorced. In reality, I have not forgiven him and would leave after the kids are grown up or if the kids feel unhappy. For now, we're working efficiently as parents and the kids are back to being normal and happy. A few days ago, Sally asked to meet through a mutual friend. Upon meeting, she said she was sorry and that she was getting married. She asked me to forget the past and be a family again. She even asked me to be the bridesmaid. I honestly laughed at her face and left. Now she's saying I'm being cruel since I accepted my husband but am punishing her, that I'm her only family and I should leave things in the past. I honestly don't want anything to do with her because of how much she hurt me. I adored her growing up and she did that to me, but I don't know anymore. So, am I the idiot for not forgiving my sister as she had an affair with my husband, even though I accepted my husband back? Not the idiot for cutting your sister off, but you are the idiot for not giving yourself a better life, the life you deserve. You could make it work. Anyone can change their situation if they really want to. You're willing to spend the next 10 plus or whatever years of your life miserable because of your excuses. That makes you an idiot to yourself and the future well-being of your kids who have to grow up knowing you didn't have it in you to stand up for yourself and leave. OP, just so you know, your kids aren't stupid. They're much more intuitive than you think, and even if everything seems like sunshine and rainbows, they know their parents are just going through the motions. You should have divorced your husband. You could have been co-parents in separate houses. That way, the kids could still see their dad. A good dad doesn't translate to a good husband. Anyway, to each their own, you don't owe your sister anything. But to change one thing you said, she did that to you at the end. That is inaccurate. They both did that to you. Your husband is just as responsible as your sister is. Agreed. Staying together for the kids is rarely good for the kids. You're potentially teaching your kids to someday accept the same treatment. I really hope she doesn't have girl children. What a terrible thing to model. Forgive the wandering spouse, but that hussy affair partner is dead to you. The misogyny is coming from inside the house, ma'am. Update, I've been very clear with my husband that I haven't forgiven him. I might forgive him in the future, or I might never. Right now, I don't know. However, I could not take his right to be a dad as well, as we both love our kids a lot. I'm not deceiving him nor giving him false hope. As for kids being unhappy, if at any point in the future I feel they are unhappy, or this arrangement is doing more harm than good, then we will choose the route to co-parent. For now, I've decided to wait until the kids have grown up a bit so they can understand the situation. But for now, they're happy having both dad and mom around. Even if I could forgive my husband, I would divorce him in the future as I cannot see him as my husband anymore and I'm no longer sleeping with him. My sister Jen, 28, and I, 27 female, are from a lower middle class family. Our parents worked hard to provide for us, so when we both graduated from university, the same major and faculty, we agreed that we would take our parents out to eat at a nice place monthly and take turns paying, in addition to helping them with what we can. I met my husband Tom, 33, in my last year of university. 
He's rich, the only child of two doctors and himself a biomedical engineer, and adores my parents. We married last year and he was engaged for two years before that. Since we've been engaged, Tom has been paying for our outings. He took my family to the nicest places, citing YOLO, and we always had the best times. Jen chose to do what she loved, and while her pay could have been better, she never struggled financially. She could take our family out until last year when she decided to pursue a graduate degree, thus not earning. Tom and I said we would still have our nice monthly meal, and we would just pay for everyone. Jen started seeing Rick, 29 male, nine months ago. Five months into the relationship, Jen asked if she could bring Rick to our meal, and we said yes. Rick was working a similar job to Jen's, but in a more senior position. It so happened that my parents craved a certain type of food when Rick started to join us, so the restaurants we chose were not overly extravagant. Rick noticed how Tom and I always paid, and he said he would like to cover the bills next time. Everyone said okay. My mom chose a nice restaurant for our last outing. My parents and Tom proceeded as usual, but I noticed Rick and Jen looking tense. When it was almost time to pay, Jen pulled me aside and asked if she could borrow some money. I told her I would happily pay for the meal. Jen said it would make Rick look bad to be unable to pay when he said he would. I told Jen Rick could put everything on his credit card and I would send him money later. Rick ended up doing that and after we four sent my parents back home, I asked Rick how much money he would like me to help him with. Rick said he didn't expect to dine with such elites and it was classist of us to spend so much on just one meal. Tom said if he couldn't afford the place, he could just tell us and we could have changed the place. Rick then accused Tom and me of calling him poor and beneath us. He said he would rather go into debt than accept our help. I could tell Tom was mad, but he just took me home. Jen later called me and said I was inconsiderate for not asking our mom to choose a less pricey restaurant. She said if Tom and I thought the restaurants we'd been dining at so far were average priced, we were so out of touch with reality. She said Rick was also mad at her for making him lose face. Am I the idiot? Your sister is the idiot in all of this. I know it seems off, but she's at the center of this. She must have known her boyfriend is a sensitive little sniper who clearly has issues regarding his socioeconomic status. He'd rather be in debt. Oh, please say she's heeded that neon flag. Seriously, she's been involved in these dinners since day one. You made it very clear that you and she are equal in your relationship with your parents and in life, though you have more money. She could have warned him. I understand his desire to impress, but his pride is the evil in all this. She must know she's dating a man with that kind of pride. Everyone is glossing over the point that Rick has freeloaded multiple meals FOP and her husband, Tom. Somehow, in all of those free meals, he hasn't saved enough to pay for one pricey meal for the group. Rick is a gainfully employed 29-year-old. Why should OP and Tom always pay for him? If Rick can't afford it and couldn't be bothered to check the price of the restaurant, he just needs to swallow his pride and admit it. I'm baffled at his audacity about losing face because he wasn't losing face by freeloading this entire time. Exactly. Weren't they elitist when they were footing the bill? Not only is he entitled, but he's also in denial about his own success and circumstances. Sounds like Rick has champagne taste on a beer budget. OP is not the idiot. This was on the sister and her boyfriend to manage, not OP. My daughter, 28, and I, 56 female, have a tough relationship. I take the blame for all this. When she told me she was a lesbian, I didn't react well. I didn't kick her out of the house or do anything else, but I said terrible things. Our wonderful relationship turned into barely talking. My husband woke me up two years after she came out. I started trying to improve my thoughts and prejudices and understand all of this better. Still, our relationship was already severely damaged because of me. I apologized to her for the things I said. We had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation and she was very sincere in saying that when she left the house, she would cut off contact with me because, despite accepting my apology, she no longer trusted me as someone she wanted around. I accepted this and she cut off 95% of contact with me after going to college. I tried to get closer or go to therapy together but she refused so I respected it. We had contact while my husband was alive because she attended the end of year parties. Still, after he passed away three years ago, we talked three times. She didn't want to talk and I respected that because I was aware of what I did. Two weeks ago, I was in a car accident and I broke two ribs in my arm and had several scratches on my body. It was nothing serious, I'm recovering well and have help at home. I didn't say anything to my daughter because we don't talk and she lives eight hours away. She called me yesterday, asking if I'd really been in an accident. 
When I confirmed, she started to argue with me, saying, I shouldn't learn this kind of thing from my cousin, but from you. I was honest here and said we hadn't talked in months, almost a year. I respected what she asked and I thought this was a topic she wasn't interested in. She started to say that even though we didn't talk, I had to tell her this type of information because she was my daughter and the only immediate family and not hide it from her. She's upset with me, but today I received a bag from the pharmacy with pain medication and other things from her. I'm feeling bad, but I'm also doing what she asked, which is that we have no contact. Am I the idiot? Yeah, ignoring everything in the past here and judging on the present is not the idiot. She's the one who maintained a no-contact relationship. You've respected her wishes for years and kept your distance at her request. It's ridiculous for her to scold you for doing as she requested. You can't be faulted for respecting her wishes. She can't change the rules and then play the victim after the fact. It sounds like there's no winning for you here. You're damned if you do, damned if you don't. She's going to be upset whether you contact her after being told not to or you didn't contact her. You're not a mind reader to determine what contact is acceptable for her, depending on what rules she's established that day. It's possible the daughter got a real scare after the accident and is now regretting how much distance there is in the relationship. She's not expressing it well if that is the case, or she's only upset because she heard about it from her cousin and was embarrassed that she didn't know something important about her mother. Exactly, the daughter realized she looked bad to the family when her cousin told her about the accident. Send her a thank you note for thinking about you. Tell her that if you have another accident, you will tell her. Then it's up to her to get back in contact. Do not expect much, though. You might have made a mistake, but her behavior is just as bad. My girlfriend is a very practical person who has an I don't care mentality toward cars and most things in general. I'm an amateur mechanic and really like cars. Currently, I'm driving and working on my BMW 535i. My girlfriend has a 2015 Toyota RAV4, which she bought new. I've joked that it's ugly and it made her angry. I didn't think she took it so seriously. My parents live in the mountains now and my mom had her tonsils removed after frequent strep infections. I wanted to visit her, but there was a lot of snowfall which froze and my car is real-wheel drive. I asked to switch cars with my girlfriend and she said no. When I asked why, she told me I kept making fun of it. I hadn't made fun of her car in months, and it's ridiculous she still remembers and is making a big deal out of borrowing her car. I argued with her, but she wouldn't budge and told me to rent a car, if it was a big deal. Last-minute rentals are about $150 a day, and I plan to stay overnight. $300 for a three-hour drive seems crazy, and I offered to pay her $100 for her car for the weekend, but got shut down. I feel like she's childish, but am I the idiot here for making fun of her car? You are the idiot. You made fun of her car and that hurt her feelings. Obviously, you didn't apologize or did the lousy, it was just a joke, babe, don't take it so seriously, which is not an apology. So she still holds to that grudge. Now you want to use her car, she's coming back at you for disrespecting her car, which is totally her right. She's not allowing you to borrow it, it is totally her right. You need to instead pay $300 and you think it's crazy, but you still haven't apologized, right? Instead, you've called her childish and ridiculous and made a big deal out of it. All tactics used to avoid taking responsibility and holding yourself accountable for your actions. But he hasn't made fun of it for months. That's an apology, right? Mr. BMW can't drive his own vehicle in the snow. He needs to use the car he previously mocked. You should consider getting off your high horse and offering a real apology. Your girlfriend purchased a car and worked to pay it off. I'm sure she's proud of it and to have you mock it is disrespectful. I, female 21, have a skin condition called vitiligo, and despite it now covering more than half my body, I've come to accept it. I also have pretty distinct scars. They're not really nice looking, but it's whatever. I don't cover up any of that. I'm happy with how I look, and I don't want to hide a part of me. But that brings me to the wedding party in question. My cousin Dan, 27, is marrying Laura, 26. I befriended her through Dan, she was always nice and didn't fuss about how I looked. That said, when she asked me to be her bridesmaid and I accepted, she asked if I could cover the scars up. I admit I wasn't too happy, but they can be an eyesore, so I agreed. That was last autumn. A few weeks ago, she extended the request to cover up the skin condition, which would mean two things. Either I would wear a completely different dress or attire than I already bought and other bridesmaids had, or I would wear 60% concealing cream for the day. 
For everyone there, that would just make me stand out more and make Laura blatantly look bad, in my opinion. Why is she wearing a suit? Didn't she entirely ditch concealers years ago? I explained that I couldn't do that for said reasons, to which she basically told me to figure something out, and that she didn't want me taking the attention away. I told her everyone attending already knew me, so I didn't know what was wrong. Laura still demanded I figure something out, so I did the simplest thing I could to appease her. I can't steal her thunder when I'm not at the party. I still intended to come as a guest and in a normal dress, though. Laura still told me to cover up even as a guest. I told her no, which she didn't take well. So now I'm not attending at all. Dan told Laura to let it go and kind of tried to calm her down and most people relatively agreed with me. However, I also had people tell me to swallow my pride for a day. So, am I the idiot? Honey, can you please attend the wedding in a head-to-toe sheet with eyes cut out? It's like a full-on ghost, but not a white sheet, then you might be mistaken for the bride. Jesus, you are not the idiot for not attending. If I were Dan, I'd cancel the wedding. Who wants to be with such a superficial, entitled and unkind person? I'd go with a full-body astronaut costume with a reflective helmet. OP, you have a health condition that you live with. This is not the swallow the pride thing. This is not the case when a guest insists, I'm just expressing myself, my pride. No one has the right to ask you to cover up how you look for their event, and you've learned something important about your cousin and his bride-to-be. Feel free to tell anyone who asks why you're not attending. I'm sorry you have to deal with this.